Hello and welcome to CMC Markets Weekly Trading Outlook for the week of June the 22nd, 2015. My name is Colin Sadzinski, Chief Market Strategist. Our topic this week is to Grexit or not to Grexit. That is the big question facing markets. There's a few other things going on, but really, that's the big one. And uh, and then beyond that, do we start looking at Brexit and, 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 and other things? So there's, a, uh, there's quite a bit going on, but that's really the key focus. So I'm just going to talk about that briefly. Uh, the Greek situation has been dragging on. It's been dragging on for years now, and I think the the amount of uh, of ink that's been spilled and commentary that's been made about on, on both sides whether they should buckle down and stay in the euro, whether they should go, and, or whether they should just try and kick the can down the road again. There's been a lot of opinions, but uh, but I, it seems to me as though the street's getting to the point where they like to see either side just fish and cut bait and get on with it, rather than continuing to drag this on over and over and, and, and over again. We'll see what we uh, what we actually get out of it. But this is a week where things could finally come to a head. Um, as of Friday here, Greece does seem to have gotten a little bit more money out of the ECB, so it looks like their banks may actually open on Monday we'll see but uh, but certainly whether that could uh, that could cause some uh, uh, trading to uh, begin the week but really the big one is Monday there's an emergency EU summit being called just about Greece and just to deal with it and this looks like it's going to be the one where perhaps the rubber will hit the road and either they'll come up with a deal uh, or they won't if they won't then they start working on how does how does uh, Greece leave the uh, the eurozone and and if they do then uh, hopefully they'll come up with something that's actually going to be able to put the country on a sustainable Sustainable footing. The one thing the street probably would like the least is just more delaying or putting it off till December or it was the last rumor going off or, or what have you. I think the, the traders have pretty much had enough of this one way or another and are hoping for some kind of a resolution. We'll see if we actually get one or not. But following the big meeting on Monday, there's also a scheduled EU leader summit later in the week as well. So that does give them another kick at it if they don't quite get done on Monday. But really, Greece is running out of time. June 30th is only a week away, and that's when the second bailout expires and the big IMF payment is due. Even if they do manage to get an agreement, if if they have come up with a deal that has to go back to national parliaments, there's no guarantee that everybody is going to uh, toe the line and, and pass it. So there could still be some uh, some uncertainty either uh, either way from what comes out of this. Could keep trading quite volatile and active right through the week and right through to the end of the month. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, on that note, we'll start with uh, with gold, and uh, because gold is one of the areas that is one of the uh, a big defensive play and. Uh, it's haven for capital. And so if we did start to see real concerns about that things could go off the rails with Greece in some way, uh, we could start to see it in gold. For uh, for the most part, gold's been going sideways since March, uh, interestingly enough. And uh, and uh, basically in a trading channel between about 1170 here at the low, and about 1220, maybe 1230 up here at the high. At the beginning of June, we had a washout here, a bear trap where we dipped below 150. 1170 turned around that's become support since and now gold has started to work its way higher so there is a little bit of concern over political risk with gold on top of that and i'll just show this on the bigger chart here as well so on top of that we do have the rsi and gold starting to pick back up above 50 so we are seeing upward momentum pick up in the near term it looks like we are looking to uh, rise on gold perhaps into this upper part of the channel it's holding here just above 1200 for the moment but this doji here is telling me also though that we could see uh, bulls and bears in balance and maybe we digest in and around here for a uh, for a little while the uh, moving on I'll, uh, I'll look at, uh, at euro dollar which is another uh, market that could be quite active on uh, on any Greece situation just out of interest by the way uh, clients on the client sentiment are generally still net long on Greece it's a different story however on euro dollar Euro dollar, we have clients are net short, but uh, interestingly enough, there's been a big decline here in top clients and their position holdings in net short. So they've been covering their shorts and uh, and perhaps starting to go long here, and we could see a shift in the uh, in the euro. What uh, intrigues me quite a bit about the euro euro chart is that most of the declines actually took place at the beginning of this year and really the through the latter part of 2014 and continued right down but since March we've actually seen the euro leveling off it's as though the the Grexit fears may already be priced into the euro because it's dropped here from uh, a year ago at uh, 133 down to 104 and it's bounced back up into this uh, 112 11350 area so and look at this though we've got almost a double bottom here we've had an initial breakout 
from this first base. And now we've got it here. And look at this nice little ascending triangle forming below 115. RSI trending higher and holding above 50 suggests continued upward momentum as well. Euro dollar like to be uh, likely to be active on the Greece news, but which direction it goes is uh, is up for consideration because if uh, if Greece the uh, is considered to be the weakest link in the euro leaves, that could actually potentially strengthen the euro. The question is, does it create more uncertainty in the short term, knock it down? But it seems to me as though the traders are are, are thinking that. Uh, that some way or another, some of the the uh, the risks could uh, could start to go away over time, and we're seeing nice quiet accumulation in the euro here. And it's not just the euro. If we go and look at uh, cable, we'll uh, we'll also see a uh, a bit of a turnaround here. Now, cable is a currency that could benefit if we did see some capital flows out of Europe and uh, and looking for a safe haven somewhere nearby like the United Kingdom and look at this we've actually seen it's also recovered this was a bit more of a clear double bottom here back March April and and since then it's been a pretty strong recovery first uh, first couple of waves here nice wave up here after the election had a correction uh, bottomed out at a uh, at a higher low and now we've got it breaking out again it's sitting here just below 159 and consolidating its rally a little bit overbought on the RSI so we could get a bit of a short term uh, correction here but uh, also look at this we've got the 50 day moving average climbing towards the 200 it's possible if this continues on that we could be setting up for a golden cross as well so uh, we are seeing some uh, improving technicals certainly underneath sterling as uh, as well these days I'll also show the uh, the DAX, which I've been using as a, a proxy for uh, trading in European equity markets. Uh, interestingly enough, as the uh, as the euro uh, has been recovering since April, the uh, the DAX has actually been retreating. Look at this as strengthening euro and weakening uh, weakening DAX, and it's still trending steadily lower here. Still trending steadily lower here on the RSI as well. It's come back now between uh, 11,180 around 11,000. We've got this Fibonacci cluster here in the 10,000. Um, 800 to 10,850 zone here. If it breaks that next Fibonacci cluster down here, 10,350 to about 10,450 in in and around there, and uh, we've already we're well below the uh, the 50-day moving average here, drifting back. The 200 is closer is almost right on 10,500 at 10,512 by. Uh, Maybe 10, 5, 20 by my, my counting anyways. So Europe likely to be quite volatile on uh, on what happens with Greece. But uh, as I said, really, there, there's there's three things. Either they come up with a deal to, sal to salvage Greece in the EU or the Eurozone, or we have a Grexit, or we, uh, we they try to muddle along again. And uh, of the three, the, the muddle along might have the least impact on the markets in the short term. But uh, again, at the same time, eventually they have to deal with this one way or another. There's certainly been enough talk from politicians thinking they want to resolve this matter once and for all. But we'll see if they actually strike up and, and actually are able to do so. The uh, Looking at, uh, at other countries this week, it's, uh, it's relatively quiet. There's uh, there's not a lot of news. There is a little bit from the U.S. and uh, and a little bit from Asia Pacific. In terms of the United States, we get um, durable goods and uh, flash purchasing managers on Tuesday. Uh, there's also a GDP report, but GDP it's the third kick at Q1. Everybody knows it was bad. Most people are far more interested in, in their Q2 recovery. Now, to be fair, one thing we'll watch with the U.S. GDP is that the uh, the government has figured out in in the Fed and others uh, that the uh, the seasonal adjustment factor for the first quarter has gone out of whack, and they're looking at uh, at fixing it. So it is possible we may see some v revisions in the U.S. GDP, or uh, or that it could be revised later as well. So we will keep an eye on that. There is a possibility of a surprise there, but uh, otherwise, uh, otherwise, I think overall, uh, the uh, people think that realize that Q1 was pretty soft. Uh, overall and are more concerned about Q2. So in fact, the flash PMI, which is the first reading for uh, June and what's going on in June and have we continued the momentum of May, may actually end up being more important this week, uh, depending on, on whether we get a, a more um, significant revision or not. The, uh, so let's take a look here at, uh, at U.S. markets briefly. I'll just take a quick look at the, uh, at the Dow here. And uh, what we're seeing here, clients have been bearish. We're at uh, they were seven, all clients 77% short, but that's actually dropped off here today. So we are seeing some uh, some short covering ahead of the weekend. I think in general, you know, here we're seeing uh, mar in in the markets that people are kind of pulling back a bit on some of their uh, positions heading into the weekend with uh, with so much grease risk out there. But basically, look at this. We're looking at the. Uh, 
US 30 has gone into a sideways trading channel. This could persist for several months yet based on uh, on past experience with these type of mid-cycle consolidations. Trading channel 11 7 sorry 17700 to about 18360 maybe 183 three and change anyways so overall uh, trending sideways here for the uh, for the US markets we could if we did see something happen in Europe get uh, get some of a response in the United States as well so we'll be keeping an eye on that but the US and economic news is fairly limited and it's even if we did get a, a big revision to GDP there's probably nothing in the news that's going to change uh, current expectations about uh, about interest rates which may keep the US markets generally continuing to trend sideways a, uh, where we could see some action, though, is in the Asia Pacific markets, and I will uh, I'll take a look. I'll start with uh, dollar yen, and uh, and the reason is we do have two things in Asia Pacific this week. At the beginning of the week, we have flash purchasing managers for China and Japan. At the end of the week, we have Japan's main basket of monthly economic indicators. We have been seeing lately that J Japan has been strengthening. The uh, it peaked out here in uh, in early June in and around above 125, but it couldn't stay above it. It's been knocked back since then. It's been drifting lower. We're seeing consistently lower highs. We're seeing some pretty long shadows on these. Uh, on these rallies, which is suggesting that every time it's run up, it's getting hit by the uh, by the bears now, and in particular, these two are pretty close. Oh, not quite gravestone jo dojis, but still look uh, uh, pretty weak here. And uh, and now we're starting to see it break to the downside. Similarly, we got way overbought on the RSI, came back down, now dipping under 50, starting to break to the downside. Suggests we're rolling over here. So looking at retracements of this, 122.50 is the 50% retracement, the 62% retracement, 121.65. So we still have some room for a uh, another potential down leg on the uh, on the dollar yen if we get uh, any, any kind of strengthening in uh, Japanese data uh, in particular could help to uh, to boost the yen's prospects here because uh, traders are still watch as we know governor Kuroda had uh, had made some comments about that uh, perhaps the yen sell-off had been overdone and the street took that as being bullish he's tried to back away from that but uh, but at the same time if we uh, anything that suggests we could uh, we could see the uh, the Bank of Japan be any less dovish in the uh, in the future could uh, could send this pair lower. Similarly, as we've seen the yen starting to strengthen with the um, with the U.S. Do uh, dollar yen falling, it is a sign that uh, the yen strengthening. We're also starting to see the uh, the Nikkei rollover. So as the yen weakened, the the Nikkei had been very strong, but now that the yen has started to strengthen, this has started to back off. And look at this consistent trend of lower highs tells me that it's quietly starting to come under distribution here. Bit of a descending triangle forming. Look at this on the RSI. We're drifting lower. We've gone under 50. Momentum starting to turn downward. 22.25, the uh, the April high had become support for a while. It's now been broken. Next support it's kind of still kicking in here at the 20,000 round number but if that fails next support 19880 and this low here is around 19785 so there is some downside in the uh, in the dollar yen if i just drain that up a little bit we'll see that our first 23% uh, fibonacci support 19665 so there is some room for this to uh, continue to correct back we'll also be keeping an eye on hong kong markets which have been uh, have been quite active lately We'll take, uh, start with the Hong Kong China H, which uh, which tracks some of the Shanghai. We had a uh, kind of a double top here, and it's been steadily retreating, step down, uh, downward uh, staircase pattern, sell off, consolidate lower level, sell off, consolidate at lower level. Next uh, breakdown, if we get one, could take you back to 13,000 even or 12,760. And our RSI had been way overbought. Negative divergence at that peak in early June uh, suggested the upward momentum was failing, and now we're seeing momentum turning increasingly downward. We'll also uh, look at the regular Hang Hong Kong index here. Which shows similarly almost a double top here, not quite the same negative divergence, but still we had a bit significantly lower high uh, on the RSI, telling us momentum was uh, shifting from upward to downward. We've gone under 50, and similarly we're under this downward staircase distribution pattern, currently trading around this 26,750 area support there, about 26,500. Next Fibonacci around 26,150, and there's the 26,000 round number. So that is the uh, this week, and uh, I will just quickly show a, a couple of other markets here. Crude oil, 
Uh, crude oil we're starting to see come back off again here with uh, basically capital has been coming out of some of the risk markets and going defensive ahead of the weekend in case something happens with Greece. But uh, overall, so we are getting a bit of a down day here for Texas. It's back under 60 bucks, but basically we're in a channel here between $57 and 61 up to say 61.50. But look, every time we peaked above $61, look at those tails there on the uh, consistently on the um, on the candles here every single time we got about 60 knocked back down by the end of the day so or 61 dollars so uh, so certainly there is quite a bit of resistance still in place there and uh, RSI is neutral to uh, to pending downturn for that and what does that mean for the uh, Canadian dollar we'll uh, we'll show dollar cad here now it shows us that this is starting to level off a little bit. We had the, uh, of course, this uh, going up means CAD weakening. So CAD weakened dramatically when the oil price crashed, when the oil price bottomed out, this topped out, and when the oil price started to recover, the started to come back down as the loony recovered as well. We had a little bit of weakness here, but we have seen the uh, resistance come in at a lower high at this 125 round number here so and now we're stepping down and now we're consolidating around 123 which is this Fibonacci level here in a channel between 122 and 123.60 now here we've got a hammer and a bear trap where we dip below 122 turned right back around so and with the uh, the crude oil looking a bit toppy here uh, or at least limited upside for the moment this could bounce back up a little bit this uh, resistance here is around 124 and finally I'll just take a peek at the uh, the Aussie dollar the uh, the Aussie dollar has been quite active lately and uh, and it's actually getting knocked back a little bit with some U.S. dollar strengthening, but it's had its ups and downs days. But overall, it does look like it's still trying to recover here. We had it coming up off a double bottom, initial move up, correction, uh, getting supported a higher low. This uh, this area here, 76 cents even, uh, to down to 75.50, has become a pretty strong support zone for the Aussie dollar. These long tails, each time it dips back, it's getting good support here, and uh, we're forming an ascending triangle below 78 we break that first resistance is here about 70 uh, 930 and then the 80 cent round number and where which coincides with the Fibonacci test and final currency we'll look at is Kiwi dollar they've been uh, the Aussie and the Kiwi have both been quite active of late Kiwi's been under a little more pressure as we can see lately it it, it, it its attempt to bottom out not only fa failed here, but since the beginning of May, it's been under pretty heavy pressure here. Uh, basically, it's on speculation that the uh, RBNZ may continue to cut interest rates, and recent economic data does suggest that they're still under pressure. So, broke 70, first support around 69, measured support possible around 68, but this is still in a uh, in a fairly established downtrend here. So. It looks like it could be quite a week for trading once again. Uh, a lot of the focus is going to be on Greece and on the Eurozone. And uh, it, it's important to remember that, that political trends take a lot of time. But there is the, uh, we could see ins ongoing instability in the Eurozone, regardless of what happens with Greece. There's been a lot of elections lately in, in the UK, Spain, Italy, Poland, and even Denmark most recently. And, uh, and in all cases, we've seen Eurosceptic parties making big greens or actually winning. That suggests that, uh, that there's a lot of unhappiness out there with, uh, with what's been going on. And that's a political trend that could play out for some time and could keep markets active for some time. But this week in particular, there's a big focus on the euro and likely gold and, uh, and some of the European markets as well uh, because things could come to a head.